Hello you, welcome to Geekism for the third time today for another Planet Zoo video. This is the big one though, this is uh, a deep dive into the scenario reveal that we've had at Gamescom. So this is an official video that's gone out today and it shows through the scenario with a bit more detail. This is the uh, the scenario, the alpha scenario that the streamers who are at Gamescom are getting to play. Uh, but here it's kind of walked through a bit of slower pace. They sh show things individually as they move forward. And there's loads of new little bits in here as well. So we thought we'd go through and rip it to shreds and see what we can find there. We start off by seeing a little bit of Bernie, uh, the guy himself. Starts off speaking Planko. I was really worried that the whole thing was going to be in Planko, but after a few Few minutes he's like oh no sorry I'll talk in English it's okay uh, he gets going sort of showing us around showing us who he is and, and a little bit of the backstory apparently the narrative is really quite important uh, in Planet Zoo and it follows on each zoo sort of follows on from the one before it it's really quite exciting uh, one thing Bernie mentions here that I've noticed was the, uh, um, the the reason you're here is because their last uh, contractor had to retire um, due to sneezing or something like that. He gets an allergy or something. It's all quite tongue-in-cheek and stuff. Um, but they did mention about having a breeding program as well for lions. That's a bit of a, a nod to somewhere like Longleat, that obviously very famous for its lion breeding program. Uh, and yeah, so you're here now and you're getting thrown into the thick of it. Now, Bernie is more of a quest-giving kind of character. He's going to turn up to let you know what goes on and then clear off again. But there are other characters that are going to take you step-by-step step through the uh, process. Uh, the first one of those we meet is Nancy. Uh, who I'm going to let you listen to for just one second. From that rosy, fresh face of yours, I'm guessing you're Bernie's new hire. Because she's a Welsh girl from the valleys, isn't it? Which was quite surprising. Nancy uh, is Welsh, which is awesome. Uh, so she's uh, she's the sort of food, feet on the boot, uh, boot, feet on the boots, boots on the ground kind of lady. She's the one who's going to sort of show us through actually what needs to happen. So the first thing they go on to show us is placing down a couple of warthogs, uh, which is one of the new animals announced today. And we can see uh, what they're going to look like when they go down here. So here's an exhibit. Now, a lot of people have been pointing out these blue lines around the exhibit. I actually think those are just tutorial lines. I think they are there to show you where we're going to focus on with, uh, with the tutorial, because later on you see them on the ground where there's nothing there and they place things inside that space I, I'm pretty sure they, they only exist there uh, to add to the tutorial which is great because Planet Coasters didn't really have a tutorial so it's really good to see that they've taken the time here to do it so here we can have a good look at the animal market this is where we're going to actually pick up animals from now this is a very streamlined version of it they've said they've just got the two warthogs here as part of the tutorial normally that list would be full of all different animals depending on what you uh, what you can have now this is obviously how it works in a scenario. Um, certain scenarios are going to have certain anim animals available, things like that. The lovely thing here is that they all come from various sources uh, and things. So here, this first one is from a private zoo. We can see down the bottom here. The other one, I think it says it's come from a um, from a from a, 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 a legal export shipment that was stopped. Uh, you know, so you're helping rehome animals that you know should normally be out there. Uh, on the left there, you've got an appeal rating. Now there are different colours and different shapes of those. I'm not 100 sure what they mean yet uh, because I've seen I thought maybe it was just like the number so there was like a bronze a silver and a gold but I've seen that number be wildly different on some screens yet them have the same appeal so I don't know whether they have different types of appeal so perhaps they have appeal to some people who are important who are really big on conservationists they have a some some appeal might be there for people who are really big on big cats or something I really don't know yet to be honest with you uh, other than that you can see there that they have um, uh, the sex, obviously, age, um, the the little hammer there. I think is how long until the uh, till this offer goes away. Basically, if you look on the right there, you can see that number in sort of hours and minutes and seconds. Uh, but there, the number I think it's probably that's a code number that needs to get changed there. So at the moment, we've got 29 hours, half yeah, 29 hours and 57 minutes and 22 seconds to decide whether or not we want this warthog in our park, basically. Um, and like I said, that list would normally be much fuller. Now, how this works in scenario, in um, sandbox mode, excuse me, I have no idea. We haven't seen that yet. Uh, I would imagine this screen changes probably for more of just a pic images and you just click which animal you want, because obviously in sandbox, they all need to be available. And it doesn't really matter where they come from or how much they are, you know, it just, they just I want to place down five baby giraffes, let's go, you know. So that'd be interesting to see how that works for um, 
sandbox. But otherwise, you can see there their genetics are broken down into size, longevity, fertility, immunity. You want those nice and high. And obviously, you want to be, uh, if you're going to be breeding them, you want the different genetic pools. You want to make sure you're getting them from different places. And then once you start breeding them, not to keep breeding children together and things like that will drag those genetics gen 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 genetics way, way down. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. They place the, uh, the warthogs down. We get a better idea of how that happens. So they are going for a system similar to some of the older Zoo Tycoon games where all the animals turn up in crates. Uh, this is a great way of doing it, I think. It's a little bit tongue-in-cheek. It's a little bit of sort of suspension of disbelief, but there's no other real way of doing it personally. I think the only way you could do it, I guess, is drag and drop them around like you can with the staff. Um, but then obviously it kind of negates any issues when animals break out. You can just pick them up and throw them back again. Whereas here, you have to have a zookeeper go over and grab the crate. There you go. You can see the crates here. They are. They come running in and then the crates scale up to the size of the warthog and it pops open and uh, and there we go we now have a warthog in the uh in the enclosure and you can see we've got a boy and a girl nabulungi that one's called fantastic and uh, there's the boy behind her and they'll go and hang out. So the next thing they'd mentioned was that the uh, the animals, when you purchase them or when you pick them up or whatever from that animal trading part, they then go and sit in a holding area. They go, I know, I don't know whether that's physically. I think it is. I think you have to have a building down somewhere in the park where they will go and sit in their crates. Uh, but we weren't shown that. But the idea there is that if there's something that's quickly going to run out, you can buy it, and it will sit there then in the holding campaign until. Um, until your exhibit is ready so you can make sure then you've got food, you've got drink, you've got the terrain they need or whatever before you go ahead and drop them in. So ways you can tell whether their stuff, uh, whether they're happy with the stuff they've got, whether they're happy with their food, their drink, the space and all that kind of thing. You can see from on the menu there, but also we have this overview uh, screen that gives us lots of different uh, drop down overviews. So temperature, uh, weather, power, whether the water, education of the guests, all that sort of thing. And the first one here has been animal welfare. So you can tell there whether they're happy or they're sad, uh, you know, based on their welfare from the color that they are. So at the moment, they're not too happy. They need a little bit of work. Uh, and I think that's mostly because they've got very little at the moment. They have no food or drink or anything. So here we go. We get our first look at the habitat view in action. And they're going to place down a food and a drink uh, place there so they can get them. Now, apparently, if you don't place down a food uh, tray like so, the, uh, the keepers will still go and give them food. But they will literally just leave it uh, wherever they can find it. They'll just drop it down on the floor somewhere. The bonus of having a food place there, specifically a certain spot, is you can go and place it by the front of the guests there, so they'll have to go over for food, and it means that they're spending more time by the glass enclosures. Talking of enclosures, we're now going to move over to what's going to become an ostrich enclosure, and they're going to show us how to fill in the walls. So again, this that, that, that line there, that blue line, makes me think this is tutorial because it's showing the gap in the fence. I think it's pretty much saying, look, go and stick a fence here. And here we go. We have now got confirmed that it is spline-based fence fencing which is fantastic similar to Jurassic World Evolution you can go in you can pick the style of fence you want and then you can go and uh, fill it up now there's only brick available here uh, from some of the live streams we've seen there seems to be about 15 to 20 types types of fence I'll put a screenshot there for you a couple of screenshots here by the way are taken from Silverette's stream today I asked him permission to use them and he very kindly let me do that so uh, thanks very much Silv for, uh, for letting me take some of the screenshots there to kind of point out a few extra issues here. So we can go into boundary editor now because there's obviously brick walls. There's nowhere for the guests to see what's going on. So they can come in and replace those brick walls with just regular glass. And now the guests have got somewhere they can come and see. And other, they're pointing out here that there are other ways that you can uh, show the exhibits off, not just through glass uh, fencing. You can have the paths come higher than the exhibit on the edges there like the train did, or you can have them coming higher here uh, right over the top of the exhibit like they do here with the elephants. Um, but obviously the animals do need a little bit of time away. They do need some time chilling out from the, away from the guests. So you have to make sure that you've got spaces for them where the guests can't see them and they can come out and uh, uh, sort of chill out away from the guests. One way you can do this is by placing a window into the walls, which is different from just a regular glass wall. A little bit nicer in my opinion, looks a bit more realistic. And you can have those windows be one way glass as well. So from the animal's point of view, it just looks like a black screen there. Um, and on the other side, the guests can see what's going on. Again, here they're pointing out how it placing the food and drink and other sort of um, you know toys and things like that near the glass will get the animals over to the glass so the guests can spend a bit of time seeing them. But then once the animals are fed and watered, like mine is, although he'll tell you otherwise, shut up, Ario. Uh, they will can they can go a little bit further away. So here the game is telling us to put down a donation box. This is a new feature we've not seen before today. 
Uh, the way this works is guests will pay to get into a park like normal, uh, but also they can make extra donations if they really enjoyed the uh, seeing the animals. And I suppose in real life, the donation would go directly towards supporting that animal. Here, I imagine probably it'll just go towards a regular bank, you know, and it's just more money for the pot. But that's another way that you can uh, garner revenue and the, your guests rather than just uh, paying to get in the place. I'm pretty sure you can now uh, get them to uh, donate for animals they like. Very quick, I don't know where this is going to go in the video. I'm recording this afterwards. I'm going to try and splice it in somewhere. One thing I was holding out to see if they shown in the uh, official video before I mentioned it. It doesn't seem like they have. Uh, but protesters are in the game. So if your animal welfare gets too low, you will have people come into the park, come into the zoo and protest with banners and megaphones and if it gets really bad you'll get quite a little group of them build up now security can deal with them but really it's better to sort of uh, fix the problem at the source and make the animal welfare better and they will eventually go away but we've showed a few of these i've actually known about this feature for quite a while if i'm honest with you i knew about this from the frontier visit we did a few months ago but it was let slip uh, unofficially sort of off the record and they were like oh don't mention that we're not announcing that yet but <laughs> now it's been shown in uh, sort of official footage we can we can tell you about it so yeah protesters are going to be a thing great feature i think uh, and be really interesting to see it's again another one of these uh, planet things that they do really quite well is that you're not having to just look at numbers if there is a problem the game will show you quite visibly as well and i think that's a really great feature anyway uh i'm gonna stick this in somewhere so back to whatever i was just talking about Next up, we're going to have a look at some of the backstage issues we have to deal with. The first one they place down here is a keeper hut. Uh, so this is where the keepers are going to go to prep food. There are different sizes of keeper huts. And again, they all come in these sort of uh, boxes that we can cover up and make them look pretty. They again point out how they have to be set a little bit further back from regular paths. So they're not in the way of, um, of staff. And then next to the keeper hut there, you'll see a, a generator. A new feature for Planet series, they did have these in Jurassic World Evolution, uh, but you are going to have to take care of power generation, and you can see here when you place down the generator, you can see the buildings nearby uh, have got power now, so interestingly it looked like that door had to have power as well, which is quite interesting. Sorry, am I talking about other animals and not you? Come here. Come on. Uh, anyway, let me just grab my cat because he won't shut up. So now we're going to move over and make a full exhibit for, I believe, a Bengal tiger. Um, so again, that line there, I'm, again, I'm pretty sure that's just a tutorial line. It's just showing you where the game would like you to put down all the walls and stuff for the tutorial. Again, not many walls to show off here in the tutorial. It's obviously all gated before you get all the stuff open, but you can place it all down there and it's got a door on for the staff to get into. And there we're going to place down some water. They didn't show much of the water to be honest and looking at the version that the streamers are playing with it doesn't look like it's fully implemented yet but the one thing they did mention is that you are going to have to keep the water clean by using water treatment buildings similar to the power treatment buildings you can see here they placed them next to each other and that'll keep the water clean for the animals there to get some uh, some drink wow he's a chunk isn't he look at him <laughs> they're showing down some of the habitat building items here so these are stuck to the ground as opposed to a lot of the scenery items you're going to be able to to do whatever you like with them uh, as you would expect from planet coaster uh, but here they have to have to sit to the ground so the animals can uh, interact with them properly and you can see they do that weird thing where they clear a little bit of grass around from them as well they, this is all taken from Jurassic world evolution that's exactly how they work in there we've got a blood pumpkin i think that said what the hell's a blood pumpkin okay uh, and a scratching post there and again it's sort of showing you how you can have that stuff near the glass there so the guests um, get to see the animals and then i think they show off a really quite nice little exhibit uh, where they uh, the animals can go to sleep and they use the uh, the two the one-way glass there sorry so is that um so they can keep out the way so here they go they're talking about exhibits here obviously that's made out of piece by piece building you can also make them out of the terrain like they've done there with the cave for the bear and then they also show off the uh, the workshop system the blueprint system here that uh, is very popular in planet coaster for those of you who aren't particularly creative you can go in and uh, use the ones that the game has given you or also give it a day or two and there'll be hundreds on the workshop that other people have put in as well and there you can go you can see that there set up with the glass uh, glass panel paneling there so that the uh, the guests can see through but the other way it's uh, it's sort of one-way glass there so the uh, the animals can't be bothered wow they look so gorgeous don't they those look at them and they also are getting in there for the water as well now uh, we are seeing that the, uh, the 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 water and the snow here is stopped by that roof 
Now I don't know. The one thing we haven't been we haven't seen yet is whether or not that roof piece is specifically classed as a roof piece or if any scenery item you put at that angle will stop the snow i'm hoping i can get somebody who's there this week to kind of cover that for us because that'd be really interesting to see uh, i know the trees stop the snow but that's obviously quite simple to do because you know you can just say this is a tree and the game knows it but it'd be interested to know whether or not the other and the other pieces are uh, stopping it as well or if it's certain pieces that are only specific to be roofs uh, so now we're moving on to terrain. There's a few different types of terrain, and obviously you need to get the terrain right for each biome there for the animals. Um, the one thing that they have said is that there's a couple of different types of each one. So there's a light sand and a dark sand, for instance, and uh, a light sand and a rough sand, excuse me, like a coarse sand. Uh, the, the animals themselves don't mind which one you use as long as you've used sand. So some of the options you've got there are aesthetic. So if the animal wants sand, you can pick which type of sand you want to put down from an aesthetic point of view. The animals won't mind as long as they've got sand which is quite good it gives you uh, a few options there um, it means that each animal hasn't got a very specific amount of certain types of terrain that they need so that each exhibit starts to look a little bit samey you're going to be able to really change them up based on what you want to do there you've got the animal welfare up and that's given us a silver star so let's pretty have a look at that before the uh, video cuts away so here we've got bronze silver and gold stars just like we had in planet coaster and every time we get one it gives us some factoids as to what the uh, the sort of highlights were during that period so at the time we got the silver star there the snow leopard was the most popular species snow leopard hasn't officially been announced yet but we've seen it now in a few clips uh, including this one we'll see a clip of it in a moment talking of which there's a few animals Animals. We'll just mention these quickly now that have been seen in live streams um, that haven't actually been officially announced yet. One of those being a yellow anaconda, uh, a gorgeous uh, bright coloured snake. There's also a bird eater spider. I think that might have been mentioned beforehand on an article somewhere, but now it's been sort of properly confirmed. And also there's been, the only time we've seen this so far is on a menu, but there's been a menu slot for a titan beetle as well, uh, which is pretty exciting. That's going to be another terrain, uh, terrarium animal, I guess. Uh, so there you go. Those are all the things we've seen so far from live streams and stuff. Uh, moving on with the video then. Okay, and I think we kind of just get some nice shots of the place now, but I think one of them is a snow leopard, so I'm going to let it play through. You can see here the, uh, the giraffes, man. They're just so gorgeous. Can't wait to get my hands on this. I really can't. And um, I'm really excited to get in there. Now, now I've seen some of the buildings go down and seen how some of the exhibits work and stuff. I think we can... I think we're going to be able to make some really amazing looking stuff here, to be honest with you. There he is. Look at him. Whoa. Gorgeous. A bit chunky. All the animals are a bit chunky. I will give them that. They're all a bit like hench. <laughs> uh, peacocks. Doesn't look like the peacocks are free roaming, actually. If you look at this shot here, you can see a fence all the way around them. I think they've made it look a little like they're free roaming, but they're not quite, actually. Uh, but there you go. There's the uh, the gameplay scenario reveal for Planet Zoo. Really exciting stuff. Uh, like I say, I recommend going over and watching the official video on Planet Zoo's channel because, obviously, there's going to be things I haven't mentioned there. There's going to be things that they talk about. But I've tried to sort of pick up on all the little bits there that um, I know a lot of you guys and girls are going to be interested in thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it if you have you can give us a like it really will help out and if you're not already uh, of course don't forget to subscribe for lots more planet zoo content uh, as we get it Thank you to all of our patrons. They make these videos possible through their incredible support at patreon.com slash geekism. There's going to be a new um, series starting on the channel for Planet Zoo. Uh, there's going to be a few series starting, actually, of course. But one of them is going to be uh, a zoo school kind of thing where we look at real-life exhibits and how we can transfer the information into Planet Zoo and make awesome exhibits for each animal. I'm going to be doing a Patreon-exclusive poll to uh, vote for which animals you would like to see in that series. We will get through them all eventually but uh, if you're a patron you're going to be able to pick which of those you'd like to see first if you're not a patron that's totally cool uh, you'll get them when you get them i guess but otherwise if you are interested you can uh, head over to patreon.com slash geekism and check that out ready for when that starts in a few weeks thanks so much for watching i'll see you in the next one